be before the board, and the complaint was based solely on the criminal complaint and the warrant previously served on Kazuski. So really, he wasn't adding anything they didn't already know. Did he, I miss something though? Wasn't Howard Johnson very much in support of him? He was, but but, but he's but he's also got to defend his suspension of him. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. So now he's like in a position where he has to suspend him because he's got criminal charges against him, but he still has to. It goes both ways. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But pro- professionally, once one of your officers has charges against him and you've suspended him, you have to kind of. Back that back that up. up, and otherwise it makes the whole department you, look bad. Yeah, if you don't even if even if you don't agree with the charges against him, he was suspending him because of those right. charges. So he had to kind of show that, like, yeah, he's, he's not saying he agrees with the charges. He's, he's just, just explaining saying, the suspension. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the department complaint uh, also added that Kaczynski had violated Rule Twenty Nine, Section Three. In Rule 44, Section 8 of the Milwaukee Police Department Rules and Regulations. Would you like me to read those? (laughs) Just the headlines of them, please. Not the complete. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The short version. Rule 29, uh, members of the police force shall at all times uh, preserve the public peace, prevent crime, etc., etc. So we apparently hadn't been doing that. Rule 44... Any member of the department may be dismissed from service by the chief of police at pretty much any time if any other rule had been violated. Okay. So they're, they're like, this is clearly in the employee handbook. We, we can like suspend the, you. Yeah, it seems like the second one is really unnecessary. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, the second one is the kind of the reason the second one is, is there's a longstanding dispute about whether police chiefs have the authority to remove people. Or whether the police commission has to do it. Okay. So, so this specifically makes a rule that says if you break any of these rules, the police chief can suspend you. So right. there's, it gets rid of any question. On so that. this is saying like, hey, I suspended you. This is why I have the authority to do right. it. Even before the police board looks over everything. Mm-hmm. He's like, so I, I didn't like jump ahead here. Like, this is my authority to do so. Gotcha. So. That actually makes a lot of sense. So, uh, the hearing before the police commission was held on March 25th. So, uh, maybe two weeks later. At that point in time, Chief Johnson abandoned the charges set on the departmental complaint um, and testified that the sole reason for the suspension um, was that a criminal complaint and a warrant had been filed against him, charging him with the commission of certain offenses. Da 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 da. Uh, the head of the John Doe investigation, John Coffey, a judge in Milwaukee County, filed an affidavit that said um, he had issued the criminal warrants against Kazuski on the charges. Um, he said, but unfortunately, until they go to trial, because it's a John Doe hearing, all the testimony and evidence is still secret. So he's like, I can't tell you why he's been charged with these things. <laughs> because it's... Yeah. Okay. So this puts him in an interesting place where now, like, the charges are against him. But there isn't anything backing up the charges on the public record. So that's an interesting situation to be in. But regardless, um, the board agreed with the decision that the chief had the right to suspend him without pay pending the trial and the criminal offenses against him. The, the trial goes forward. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look great for him because now people are actually testifying publicly. They got Mrs. Johnny Mae Jackson. Uh, who took and passed a lie detector test, uh, she alleged that she had paid Kaczynski $100 a month for seven years to let her brothel go undisturbed. Wow. Um, she had also paid off 15 other vice squad officers. And one detective even admitted that although he had never taken money from her, um, at one point in time, he did receive a bottle of brandy, and it was very nice. <laughs> so. That other detective that took the bottle of brandy, his name is Alfred Kaxkowski. <laughs> just want to throw that <laughs> out there. Just... Yeah. <laughs> so apparently the vice squad's just all the, the Polish, Polish cops. I don't know. <laughs> don't know what's up with this. Uh, so yeah, so the charges, uh, you know, they go through, basically. Like, he's not getting away with this. But in the meantime, Kazuski appealed his suspension from the board up to the courts. 
And he said the state law said that suspensions could only be for 15 days without cause. Uh, and he's like, you, you haven't proved anything against me. So for the first 15 days, fine. But after that, what do you got? Mm-hmm. The court believed that there was cause and a need to keep the public trust. So they said, well, that's cause enough right there. It's the fact that if we let you back on the job while you have this hanging over you, that disrupts the entire police department. Yeah. So that's cause. Yeah. But they did agree with him that it was unfair to withhold pay from him beyond the first 15 days. So they did reinstate his paycheck. So this whole time that he's going, uh, waiting for trial and going to trial, um, he's now got his paycheck back. <laughs> Which, right. which is fair, but it sounds awful. Yeah, it does sound awful. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, okay, I mean, you're not fired, so you're still an employee. And technically, you're not guilty you're, you're because not guilty. you haven't been found guilty yet, so. Yeah, but it still doesn't sound great to have a guy taking a paycheck paid by taxpayers and he just stays home. He's not even doing a job. He's not even doing a job, and he may have been taking bribes from people yeah. who own brothels to keep that, <laughs> to make sure they stayed open and things like that. But so. that was what they decided the law was at the time. And this is this is early sixties. Maybe this has been modified, but that's how it was at the time. It's just they, they said if we deprive you of your of your paycheck, we're it's basically like an additional punishment mm-hmm. because. You're not going to go out and look for another job while you're hoping to get your job back. And it's like, we can't just do that. And especially if you're going to go on trial, you can't afford an attorney if you're not getting paid. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it kind of like, it hampers your rights is is sort of the court's position on that. Well, anyway, so long story short, he, he does, he gets found guilty. He gets fired. He loses his pay and he's disgraced. And Captain Harry Kazuski is no more. Now, I don't know if this is because of his being disgraced or just because of his very unlucky family. But he passed away at age 57, uh, only a couple of years after this uh, dismissal long. and trial. So, But, I mean, was it of any suspicious causes or anything? Not or at all. Just kind of... Not at all, except this. <laughs> Which is going to make it really questionable, isn't it? <laughs> he was driving his Volkswagen and went off the road over a ditch and finally struck a high-tension wire. Okay, so this sounds like it could be extremely questionable. Yeah. When pronounced dead at the hospital, he had only a cut on his forehead, leading the doctor to suspect that he had had a heart attack while driving. Uh, he was survived by his wife and a son, Robert, as well as two sisters. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to call that suspicious. Maybe medical things happen. Mm. But if you want to play that game, you can say, ooh, ooh, car accident. So now I, I, I feel like over many, many episodes of this podcast, Gavin, we've been talking about how uncorrupt the Milwaukee Police Department typically has been. And this is an example of not so much, huh? Right. And... Is this one of the few examples that you will we have of this, or um, we may we may come across more. And okay. like okay, so just just quick, I'm going to quickly do this before I answer your stuff. okay okay. So his wife Angeline uh, passed in 2002, so she made another you know 35 years or something like that, um, outliving her husband for quite a, quite a bit. Their only son Robert uh, ended up changing his name to Robert Allen. Um, and had a family of his own. And, and I don't know that him changing his name has anything to do with any of that, or if it's just because Kazuski's not a fun name to say. <laughs> so, but he, but he goes by Robert <laughs> Allen. But yeah, so the, it's the corruption thing. We'll see it from time to time. And again, I'm still going to hold firm on the idea that the corruption's not that bad. It's, not that it's good. Like, I'm not excusing it. <laughs> but, again, when I compare it to Chicago and traditional Chicago corruption, where judges are getting paid off <laughs> to let murder, you know, 